welcome to Hedgehog Hollow and welcome to our first video on digital stamps. So today I've been invited to join a challenge and you'll find all the details in the linked blog post which is underneath this video. So you might need to just click the arrow there to get to it. And I'm going to be using this lovely girl in the reign of hearts. So we went with kiss kiss I love you as a lovely sentiment. Here's our beautiful bow to make it look like she's tied up in a gift just ready to give. So let's get started on our tutorial where we're going to be using Prisma colours and showing you how to work with a digital stamp to make sure that you have it printed out just right. So before we get going with our project, I wanted to talk to you about digital stamps. So digital stamps are something you print off your computer. This lovely image is from Just Me Digital Stamps and was provided to me free of charge as part of the challenge. And I had one of those awful moments of I plugged my printer in the first time that I've used it since moving here and it did not want to play. So I quickly emailed Greg the image, but of course he could only bring it home on white printer paper. So I needed to find a way to really kind of stiffen it up and make it nice and sturdy. So what I did was I used some Pritt stick or an Elmer's glue stick, way more than I'd usually use, popped it down onto my Nina Solar White and then I just took my brayer and went all over it so that I got a really nice smooth image to work with. And that has worked absolutely fine um, for my colouring. And I'm using Prisma pencils uh, today, so that will work absolutely perfectly. Now, one thing I will also say to you is toner printers, which I have, and inkjet printers do react differently to digital stamps. So when you decide on your colouring medium, my tip is to take the same image and print it on printer paper regardless. And don't just do like a little tiny check. So people say to you, oh, just colour in a small heart and see if it works. No, 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 because you're going to build up colour, you're going to build up layers, whether it's Copics, Gamasol or Zig pens, you want to do a proper test. So what I would say to you is kind of scribble over the whole image, give it a second to soak in and then go over it again, because you're going to build up layers and layers and layers and you don't want your printer to all of a sudden, as soon as it gets a little bit wet, to start smearing. Now with a toner printer you're pretty much going to be okay and it also acts a little bit like a very light embossing powder because that's the way the toner is on there whereas an inkjet printer is more like using a dye ink and you can have some more issues. So make sure you do a swatch like this first with whatever medium it is. If it's Prisma pencils go over it and make sure you put quite a lot of gum sole on it. So that's my first tip. So I'm now going to get colouring um, with my image. So this is my image here. I've got my Gamsol in my little tea light holder. All of this is linked up in the blog post, which will either be above or below this video. You may need to click a little downward arrow somewhere down here just to get that description to come up. So I'm going to fast forward through my colouring. I'm using uh, just a paper stub. And what I do is I have a scrap piece of paper. I scribble it off when I change colours onto. I'm using my smaller set of Prisma pencils here. This is the 36 set. And again, I'll link this up because we've got found some awesome prices on these for you too. Uh, the Gamsol I'm using is the Gamblin Gamsol. Again, that'll all be linked up. Uh, and if you have any other questions, you can also always leave a comment here. So we'll come back and I will show you how I'm going to mount this up once it's coloured.
now we're ready to finish our card. I've die cut this using one of the My Favourite Things basic sets, so I get a nice little frame. So the first thing I want to do is I want to stick my frame onto my card base. This is a lengthways card base cut from the Nina Solar White 80 pound. And I'm just going to take some dimensionals and if I place them carefully, they do just fit on these corners here. So we'll pop those in first. And then what I like to do is take some of the edge pieces and I'm just going to grab one of my older sheets that I keep for edges. And I'm just going to snip down the middle here. And these pieces will fit perfectly. Just snip that off of there like this. And these fit really nicely just down your sides, just so they don't sag. I particularly put them on the longer sides. So that's one. Snip off this corner too. And we'll put one of those on either of the long sides. So now we can stick this onto our card base. We can center this up before we add in our colored piece. I stuck to my nail and I always like to open my card base up I find it helps me get a better um, alignment of my pieces maybe it's something visual I don't know just having that longer piece and it also then sits a bit more flush on the desktop as well so we're going to stick down our frames give it a light tap there now part of this challenge is to use buttons and bows so I'm going to put my bow here around the bottom and if you want to know how to tie the perfect bow, we have a video on that too. So you can check that out here on our YouTube channel. So I'm going to pop this down. And tie this around. Now I don't want a particularly big bow, so we can just fiddle this around until we're happy with it. And this is quite slippery ribbon, but a lovely red color. So my bow has ended up upside down, but we can fix that. So I'm gonna get my bow till I'm happy with it first. And the thing with bows is when you wanna make them smaller, you tend to have to pull them quite a few times before you'll get it to the exact size you want. So I'm gonna cut my tail and we can adjust our tails. And of course, because it's just the wrong way up, I can just slip it off and slide it back on and then you can work out where you want to put it so if you want it at the top like this so it just kind of frames her or whether you want it down the bottom which is where I'm going to put it round by her feet so we'll just slide this down like so and I'm going to put this on the other side of her so those tails aren't in the way I want a nice angled tail and we're just going to snip those a little bit shorter and then I'm just going to use a tape runner I still use the Stampin' Up Snail I've always been very happy with it it's exactly the same as the blue Tombow tape runners that I always link up for you they're made by Tombow and they're interchangeable so if you have a Stampin' Up base you can just buy the Tombow refills for it which are a lot cheaper which is now what I do so I'm just making sure that this sits down because I want this flat and I want my frame to sit slightly proud. So I'm just fiddling it around till I am happy with it. Like so. And I also want a little sentiment on here. So it's getting quite busy. So I went for a really small sentiment. I'm gonna use one of my old Stampin' Up punches and I'm gonna use this Mama Elephant Pandemonium, which says, kiss, kiss, I love you. And I think that would just be perfect on this one. So we're stuck on here. So let's just pull this out. And this is just a, a set that I got in Joanne. So I'm just grabbing a sentiment. And with photopolymers, you always want to pick it up with the block rather than putting it on with your fingers. That'll make sure you've got a nice straight sentiment rather than a wiggly one. Grab one of my white pieces out my box. And then we can just turn this over and punch it out like so. 
and just popping that out of there. Always put the lid back on my ink so we don't end up with it over that lovely finished project. And then you can work out where you want it to go. So you could pop it down the bottom here, you could pop it at the top, which is where mine's going to go. And again, I'm gonna use some off cuts um, of pieces. So these foam strips are perfect for sentiments. So here's one I prepared earlier. And I can just stick that on the back here like this. So I'm a lefty, so I always cover things up. And I'm just going to put this up the top there. So there we have it. Kiss, kiss, I love you. And uh, this was, again, one of the Digi stamps. So be sure to check out the linked blog post. You can also find us on Instagram at Hedgehog Hollow and also on Facebook at Hedgehog Hollow Inc. So thanks for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed our quick tutorial and we'll see you again soon. Happy stamping. Bye. Bye.